Hello there guys and girls and welcome to this tutorial on how to fly the Airbus A320 and X from Microsoft Flight Simulator and Fly-by-Wire. The Airbus A320 is an absolute joy to fly and I absolutely love it and adore it and it is one of the most popular aircraft in the world. So without further ado guys, let's get started. There's a lot to learn. Hello there guys and girls, my name is Alex and welcome back to the flight deck. So as I mentioned just a second ago, we'll be teaching you guys how to fly the Airbus A320. Now I need to point out something immediately, this is not the default A320 that you get with Microsoft Flight Simulator, this is the Airbus A320NX. This is the mod that is built by Fly-By-Wire, some incredible uh, mod developers who took the basic A320 and modded the absolute hell out of it. This is almost up to a study level aircraft, there's a lot you need to learn in order for you to operate it uh, effectively and correctly. No worries, this can be quite daunting at first, but I will teach you guys all the basics of flight operations in this Airbus A320. So without further ado, let's jump in the cockpit. Unlike the default plug-and-play A320 from Microsoft Flight Simulator, Fly-by-Wire's A320NX features fully updated 4K cockpit textures along with improved flight mechanics, systems, sounds, and more. Before anything else, we must first start by giving power to the aircraft. By going to the overhead panel, we can turn on the batteries. Switch on batteries 1 and 2. You'll hear some electrical systems start to boot up. Once they're booted up, go ahead and turn the electrical power system on. Turn the fuel lines to on. At this point, you can also turn on some additional systems such as the emergency exit lights, the nav and logo lights, ding the cabin to let them know you're ready, and start the crew oxygen supply. Start by aligning the IRS so we can get some navigation systems. Now what you need to do is open your web browser and go to SimBrief. If you have not flown on Microsoft Flight Simulator before, or any simulator for that matter, you need to go to SimBrief to file accurate flight plans. Here you enter your airline, your flight number, your aircraft, your origin, and your destination airport. The rest will be done for you. As you can see here, I am highlighting the routing that we'll be taking today. We're flying from Gatwick down to Liverpool. As you can see, the flight path has already been set up. Just below this map, we can see also where the op fuel is and everything else we need to know about where the operation flight is from. We're now going to import this into Microsoft Flight Simulator. The A320NX features a fly pad. From here, you can import your SimBrief data straight into the aircraft. As you can see here, we've got our two waypoints set up already. A direct line from Gatwick to Liverpool, as well as the entire operational paperwork. Here we can find our flight plan, our route, and some additional paperwork such as routing maps. This will come in very useful later, so make sure you keep it open. We're now ready to start using the FMC. On the MCDU, you can clear the messages that are popping up on the screen immediately. You can turn the brightness up to if it's a little bit too dark. Let's clear this message. First thing you want to do is select the ATSU, go to the AOC menu, and click on Init Press. From here, you can import the data from the iPad. After pressing the request key, you can see that the basic information has been entered. Go to Performance. You can see here the trip fuel and the load you will need. By pressing load, the aircraft will automatically load the fuel required. We can now go back to the menu. The fly by wires updated MCDU has a lot of systems that the basic default A320 does not. From here, we can also access other information such as SimBrief accounts and VAT SIM data. From here, you'd be able to select which online system you're using. I'm using VAT SIM. While today I won't be flying on VATSIM's network, it's worth noting that when you use VATSIM data, it's usually pretty up to date with the real world, so I recommend using VATSIM data. We are now ready to start programming the FMC. Let's go into this menu. Here you can see some basic flight information. By going to performance, we can also see the performance data, progress, and initial flight leg. Let's request the init. 
As you can see, the aircraft is plugged in, our basic information, our call sign, our destination, and the basic waypoints. You can clear the messages at the bottom, as it's only an uplink message. The next thing to do is program the performance. Here you can see the V1 speeds, the V2 speeds, and the VR. At the moment I'm just trying to play around with a few things, as this is the new updated developer build of A320NX, there are some bugs. You can also see our indicated cruise altitude is 24,000, I will later change this to 30,000. First you want to do is start by putting your transition altitude into the transition altitude indicator. In the UK we transition at 8,000. For takeoff we'll use FLEPS 1. For the purposes of this tutorial we will not be using the flex temp. Click on the side of the V1 speeds to get your V1 references. We can now go back to the progress page and plug in some more data. On the direct page you can see our direct waypoints. On the flight plan page it is now time to start programming our approach and our de departure. We now need to program our standard instrument departure, or SID. Going back to the flight pad, we can zoom in on our flight plan. Simbrief has automatically told us which runway we're taking off out of and which uh, SID we will need. We are taking off out of 2-6 left via the Lambourne 6 mic departure. Click on the airport you're currently at, select departures, and the runway you've been given. Here you'll have an option of all SIDs that are coming out of that runway. Let's go down and find the Lambourne 6 mic departure. Click on it, and press insert into flight plan. As you can see on the MCDU now, and on the flight display, we can see that our flight route has been generated. The aircraft is now more or less prepared to depart on its technical front. Now we need to start bringing some more systems to life. With the APU already powered up, we can now start the APU system. It is now time to navigate back to your fly pad. Here I'm just going to go over a few more things in the flight plan. On this map in front of us you can see our top of climb and our top of descent. It is worth knowing this as you will need to program your aircraft to descend at the correct point as to avoid either overshooting or descending too fast. A majority of the systems are now already on. Time to engage the flight speed brakes, lock the door, and prepare the aircraft for departure. Test the lights to make sure everything is working and arm the emergency exit lights. You can now turn on the no smoking sign and the seat belts. By dinging the cabin we now alert them that we're nearly ready for departure. There's only a few more steps from here on out. Engage the beacon light to, uh, to alert the ground crew that you are ready for pushback and that the engines will be starting shortly. You can now call for the tug on this page. The jetway will automatically disconnect and the tug will start to pull itself together and it will grab the front of the aircraft. Once the aircraft has been connected you will be able to start your engines. The pushback is quite tedious so please be patient with it. Navigraph has also been integrated into the fly pad. All you have to do is sign in and you can access all the airport charts. It is worth using airport charts as it's quite easy to get lost at major international airports. Gawick is not one of the most confusing airports in the world, but it's still confusing enough so you don't know where you're going. If you're flying on VATSIM, this is 100% crucial. The pushback has started. We can release the parking brake and start engine 2. While engine 2 comes to life, I can quickly look at what we need to do for taxi. Check everything above you to make all systems are done accordingly. Pushback sometimes needs to be prompted, so just make sure it goes smoothly. As you can see, engine 2 is coming to life.
With engine 2 now available, we can start engine 1. We're also going to turn the plane all the way around to the right, so we can taxi left. Before we start taxiing, let me quickly go over some basic protocols when taxiing around airports. When in an airliner such as the A320, you must always follow the taxi signals and signage exactly as it is given. A straight taxi line is an aircraft follow route, which means you can follow that line. You are not allowed to deviate from this line at any time unless you're parking at a stand. It's also worth noting that there are different types of runway indications and taxiway indications, such as the hold short. A hold short will always be dashed and horizontal to where your aircraft is. If you see one of these points, you will either be asked to stop or you should stop there if you need to stop. There are also other types of indications that you can see on the ground, such as hold short locations, runway positioning, and taxiways. Pay attention to your signage, as this can help you navigate the airport. For the purposes of this flight, we won't need to pay too much attention to it, because we know where we're going. At this point, you can do a flight control check. Pushing the rudders full left and full right, ailerons full left and full right, and elevators all the way back and all the way forwards. If you're happy the systems are all working, you can get ready to go. We'll put the starter switch back to neutral and take flaps 1 for departure. With both engines now fully started, we are ready to taxi. We can turn the APU bleeds off, the system off, and go to taxi light. Ding the cabin to let them know we're ready to leave. You are now ready to taxi to the runway. Ladies and gentlemen, we now ask for your attention while we take you through the safety procedures on this aircraft. A safety card is in your seat pocket, showing the exit routes, oxygen masks, life jackets, and brace position that you must adopt if you hear, brace, brace. There are two emergency exits at the rear, four in the middle, and two at the front. We're now approaching the Alpha 2 holding point just before runway 26 left. What we're going to do is we're going to stop at the holding point, get ready to leave. Remember to set the auto brake to max, and to set your first indicated altitude on the altimeter. Set the landing lights accordingly. Turning the strobe lights to on, wing lights to on, nose light to take off, and the wing lights to on. Ding the cabin to let them know we're ready to leave. Do a quick sweep of the entire overhead panel to make sure everything is set correctly. Everything is already set up. I'm going to go to my progress page now to make sure I know what I'm doing. We're now ready to depart. We can release the parking brake, add a bit of power, and taxi onto the runway. When taxi onto any runway, active or not, make sure you check the flight path as to make sure there are no aircraft currently on short final or taking off. We now need to line up with the centre of the runway, called the centre line. When you're happy, and you've reached the takeoff point, we can apply some thrust. Going to 50%, 100, and toga. When taking off, make sure you apply forward pressure on the stick, as to make sure the aircraft stays on the ground long enough to grab some speed. The V1 speed indicator will go past, indicating you are ready to pull back. Gently pull back on the stick, and gently come off the ground. We have a positive rate of climb, we can bring the gear up. Maintain a steady climb initially after departure. We're heading to 4000 before climbing to our cruise altitude. As you can see, there's a red line starting to creep in towards our indicated speed. This is because the flaps are still down. Once it gets close enough, you can bring the flaps to up. 
When the flaps retract, you'll feel the aircraft starting to get more responsive, and the nose may dip forward. We have to make our right turn, so following the speed indicator and the flight director, we can make our right turn. The autopilot signal is now asking us to go to our thrust lever climb, bringing the thrust levers back slightly and putting on the climb setting. I'm also going to squawk mode Charlie as I've got an online system. I can now hand it over to the autopilot system 1. From here on out, the aircraft will be controlling itself. All we have to do is manage its systems. We can bring the speed brake in and make sure that the aircraft continues a steady climb out of Gatwick. Once you've made your initial climb, you can now set your cruise altitude. Make sure the aircraft is in managed climbing speed and also in managed altitude. Once you've reached your transition altitude, you can set the pressure to standard. You can also retract the landing lights and retract the wing lights. The aircraft is now in autopilot mode and will continue its flight plan as given. Congratulations, you have made it this far and you have taken off the Airbus A320. In the next episode, we'll be teaching guys how to land the A320 from its descent to its power off. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We'll see you next time. Happy flying.